you've had many, many years to hone some of these culinary skills. Is there now an expectation at home with your families where it's got to be this restaurant quality? No, we got it two chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Meet Haley and Jesse, the co-owners behind Two Chicks, a popular brunch spot in Reno, Nevada. They aren't just the co-owners, they are the chicks, and they didn't always make your classic breakfast with a little twist. They started out as a food truck, which developed into the multiple brick and mortar restaurants you see today. On their menu, they've got Bloody Mary's. Comes with a little snack. Bumblebree. There's almost like two different sources of crunch. And biscuits and gravy. Real yeah. hearty gravy, it needs a hearty yeah. biscuit. Yeah. Oh, that looks so good. I'm ready for breakfast. Let's go. We have Bumble Brie, which is one of the sandwiches that was on the gourmet truck. So that is brie cheese, ham, apples, honey on sourdough. If you're a fan of charcuterie, like this is your sandwich mm -hmm. yeah. because it's toasty, buttery on the outside, but you got that melty, gooey brie. You get a nice snap from the green apple, and then the saltiness from the ham comes in and it does this fun melding. With this, there's almost like two different sources of crunch from the apple and the toast. So there's the savoriness from the ham cheese, but you have that fruitiness cutting through. I'm proud of you for oh, thank you. trying that. A lot of people are a little nervous about that sandwich, but then they try it and it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, the, I think, one of the ones that you and I gravitate to if mm -hmm. we have like a stressful day. Mm -hmm. We're like, we're sharing a bumblebee today. <laughs> it's a bumblebee kind of day. Yeah. You mentioned Gourmet, so it initially was a food truck, correct? Right, right. How did that come about, that conversation to get into it? We worked at a restaurant next to the college together. Both of us kind of left and came back that restaurant a few times, but always remained friends and stuck with each other. Yep. I called Jesse and I said, I have an idea. And that's the only person I could think of that I would want to be in business with because we had managed together. We knew each other's work ethic. We started as a food truck. We were gourmet grilled cheese truck. It was a gourmet grilled cheese concept, and I think it really worked out for the best. It was such a great start for us in the community. A food truck is a mobile kitchen meant to serve meals at different locations, events, or neighborhoods. Food trucks have evolved a lot from their roots. In early America, they were known as chuck wagons, and they served the basics like beans and coffee to cowboys. The first real food truck as we know it was probably the Wienermobile in 1936, which toured the country selling hot dogs. Fast forward to the 1950s, when ice cream trucks became a neighborhood staple. In the 1960s and 70s, Mexican loncheras and LA taco trucks hit the streets, transforming old ice cream trucks and vans to food trucks. Finally, in 2008, food trucks truly took off, driven by the rise of social media and the economic recession. Gourmet chefs were faced with fewer restaurant jobs, so they turned to food trucks, creating gourmet street food that changed the game forever. You two created one of the first few food trucks that was in the area. There was one gourmet truck that did nights, and then there was nobody that really did days. It was a brand new scene. There weren't any ordinances when we first started, and I remember that first summer, was it Riverfest? Yeah. We just thought we could pull right up on the bridge. We thought we could pay the meter, <laughs> and we were good to go. We got <laughs> shut down for that one. So, you know, it's nice to not have to learn all those lessons the hard way and to have those, you know, rules and regulations. It's like that saying, we're like, oh, there's a rule because someone broke it at yeah. some point. Yeah. <laughs> so there was actually city ordinances that we went to city council for and, you know, worked out a deal that was best for everybody. Yep, just like traditional restaurants, Food trucks have specific rules, regulations, and ordinances they need to follow in order to operate. Most of these rules are about food safety and sanitation, while city ordinances give the rules on where and when food trucks may operate. Some of the regulations in Reno include the following. Food trucks cannot operate in one location for more than four hours. They cannot be within 100 feet of a permanent restaurant entrance, and they may only operate between 7 a.m. and 11 p.m. The eggs Benedict don't really stay on my plate for too long. For this dish, you've got poached eggs sitting on top of a cheddar and jack grilled cheese. The bread is a garlic parmesan crusted sourdough bread. 
we were kind of shocked with ourselves that it took us <laughs> as long as it did to come up with that and put it on the menu. We were like, how come we've never done a grilled cheese base before? I don't want to always say explosion. What are synonyms <laughs> for explosion? It's a lot of flavor. There's a, a complexity to it. By themselves, the hollandaise sauce and the eggs have this very warm, savory flavor to them. You get those earthy undertones and the punch of acidity kind of dancing together around the classic egg taste. The texture ends up being this fun combination of the buttery and creamy hollandaise sauce mixed in with the crunchiness of the bread. Even though it sounds like it might be from Holland, hollandaise sauce actually comes from France. The name means from Holland, probably because France was importing butter from Holland during World War I. Hollandaise is one of the five French mother sauces made with butter, egg yolks, lemon juice, and pepper. The sauce was first used on Eggs Benedict in 1860 at Delmonico's, a famous New York restaurant. So we can thank Delmonico's for this classic breakfast meal. We don't keep things on the menu that we don't like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not anything on the menu that both of us don't love. This mimosa, take a sip and it's light. I would describe it crispy <laughs> because of oh, the yeah, bubbles. Refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> and then the hash browns, yeah, with the Parmesan, it, like, it has a nice crust on the outside, but it's like soft on the inside, but still has a good bite to it. So you can mm -hmm. feel the different shreds of potato, which is really a fun texture to have. With a nice salty mm -hmm. cheesiness yeah, inside. Cheesy. Mm -hmm. We bake them actually. Oh, okay. And then they grill them yeah. to brown them up to order, yeah. Mm -hmm. If we we're gonna do hash browns on the menu, we were gonna make them different. It's funny, cause we don't always eat like, the French stuff. toast. You can't just eat French toast every day. Yeah. Well, you can. That's what I like about breakfast. I personally can eat it at any time of day. Yeah, mm -hmm. breakfast for dinner. I'm very curious to kind of hyper-focus in on specifically the juxtaposition between working in a food truck and then making that switch into a brick and mortar. I think both of them, in their own way, were harder and easier, Yeah. you know? having it just be Haley and I in the food truck really made it easier. And yeah. you know, like it was just us, we were reliant on each other. It's just you shopping, prepping, cooking, cleaning, mm -hmm. and then, you know, doing it all over again. Sometimes if we would do a night event also, but that also meant if one of us was sick, like <laughs> the truck was closed that day. And in the restaurant, there's so many more moving parts. We have amazing managers and team members now that really help us and they're the reason that we've been able to open multiple locations. But I don't think we'd want to go back to the food truck. No. It was um, for our younger days. That was a young person's job. <laughs> we were exhausted. I mean, that's the hardest I've ever worked physically. 120 degrees in there in the summer and it's freezing cold in the winter. So yeah, that was a really physical and demanding job. Uh, when we first opened the Midtown location, we were there from four in the morning to like eight o'clock at night when we very first yeah. opened, but it was a different kind of fatigue mm -hmm. and you know, it was temperature controlled, so that was bad. Yeah. <laughs> Reno's known for so many events and we got to participate in so many of them, which I think is what I miss the most about it. You're at work, but you're still like, in the event and part of it, which was so cool. That kind of led into a whole event, right, that we have locally, which is Food Truck Fridays. Yeah, we came up with Food Truck Fridays, which was in the city center, which is an old bus station. So we thought that it would be neat to use the two lanes where the bus is parked. There was seating, and then there was a little built-in stage. So we had live music, and there was only about seven trucks at that point. Food truck gatherings, also known as food truck rallies, have become more popular across the United States. These events bring together multiple food trucks in one place, offering a variety of high quality meals. For example, Reno, Nevada hosts a regular gathering called Food Truck Friday, featuring over 35 rotating gourmet trucks. These rallies and traveling food trucks are also vital in rural areas, providing quality meals in small towns that don't have the resources for traditional restaurants. The red chick skillet, a lot of different textures, sort of an overarching umami slash kind of meaty texture and taste because you've got those mushrooms in with the texture of the potatoes and the egg. The spinach makes it feel lighter. It's makes healthy. It, yeah, <laughs> that makes it healthy. And the ham coming together with the mushroom and the egg. And it's all scrambled together with cream cheese. It just makes those yes. eggs so creamy. <laughs> 
the level of friendship you both have. I've worked with friends before and I love them to death, but sometimes you're like, I don't like you in a work <laughs> setting, you know? Yeah. I don't like working with you. We just know what the other one is thinking a lot. Uh, it's gotten to the point where we really dress alike almost every, on accident almost every day. Life today. Telepathically. <laughs> this yeah. one we planned out for the show, but yes. We have our strengths and weaknesses and we balance each other out really, really well. Not just that we like each other, but we trust each other to where if she's gone, she knows that I'll make a decision that's right by both of us and yeah. vice yeah. versa. Is it meaningful to be such an integral part of the food truck history? I think that's an amazing thing to say. And um, I don't know that a lot of food truckers even know who we are anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I don't know, somewhere I'm proud, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you know, they may not know you by name, but they can run because you crawled. Oh, you know? that's very that's... sweet to say. We do love to see how it's grown and just how there's so many more opportunities for food trucks these days. When people walk into Two Chicks, is there anything you want them to walk away with? It's the way you're starting your day. We're hoping to provide you your classic comfort foods, but with a little kick, that it's bright and cheerful in here, and that you walk away feeling like, that was a damn good breakfast. <laughs> <laughs>